Thank you, Brian, so much. Um, I do agree with Sheldon, the ocean state, the bay state, but Brian <coughs> has the um, ocean state. Uh, and, uh, and we're here today to talk about um, the most important economic, environmental, national security, and moral issue of our time. Uh, because there is no other issue that has the potential catastrophic consequences uh, for our planet, uh, for every citizen of the planet, uh, more than this issue of climate change. And all of these climate champions, Senator Schumer, Cardin, Carper, Cantwell, White House, Schatz, and people all across the country, they want us to work on this issue. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Donald Trump is getting his information from uh, the Koch brothers on the science of climate change. And uh, that science is as bogus as a degree from Trump University. Uh, there is absolutely no scientific uh, basis for the positions which he has been taking. And in just a few days, on Monday, we will celebrate the 100th anniversary of President John F. Kennedy's birth. In 1961, as we confronted the Soviet Union for supremacy in the space race, President Kennedy called on the United States to respond to that great challenge. And we did. Fast forward nearly 60 years later. How is President Donald Trump dealing with the generational challenge of our time, climate change? He is conceding defeat. His budget tries to erase climate change work throughout the government. He says we don't need to support clean energy solutions. But all around the globe, renewable energy is beating out fossil fuels. In a recent auction in India, solar power sold at a price that was 24 percent less than the average price for electricity from coal. That price for solar in India was 50 percent less than what it had been just one year ago. In Mexico, solar power recently sold for 2.7 cents a kilowatt hour. But instead of supporting U.S. leadership in the global race for clean energy jobs and investment, President Trump is turning the United States from a leader into the laggard. As a result, China and India are stepping up. India is now expecting to obtain 40 percent of its electricity from non-fossil fuel sources by 2022, eight years ahead of schedule. And China's carbon emissions appear to be peaking way ahead of schedule. The global commitment to addressing global warming is well underway. We were the leader. We will, under Donald Trump, become the follower. In 1961, we had the president challenging American industry to respond to the challenge of the space race. Today, it is American companies challenging our president. Companies from Apple to GE to National Grid to Microsoft are calling on President Trump to keep the United States in the Paris Climate Agreement. It is the Kennedy era turned upside down. It is JFK in reverse. President Trump says we can't meet this challenge, but the private sector says we can. It is downright un-American for our president to abdicate American leadership to the great challenges facing our planet. By creating the clean energy technologies here at home and then deploying them around the globe, we can have job creation here that is good for all of creation. But if we don't respond, we will lose the mantle of global leadership. We are at a crossroads in our planet's history. The world has come together in support of the Paris Climate Agreement. President Trump can continue America's climate leadership, or history will judge him as failing to meet this generation's great planetary challenge. Pope Francis 
as Senator Schumer said, gave a book to uh, President Trump uh, when he was visiting with him in the Vatican. He actually gave him three books. One was on the Gospels, one was on families, and the third was the Pope's encyclical on care for our common home, Laudato Si. The Pope taught high school chemistry. The Pope said quite clearly, number one, the planet is dangerously warming. The science is clear. Two, human beings are the principal cause of that warming. The science is clear. And the United States has the moral leadership to be the global leader, since most of the CO2 historically has been red, white, and blue. And what the president has to understand is it is the moral issue of our time, and he has a responsibility to discharge that, that challenge uh, for all of Americans.